strawberry sorbet today. And to start, I need to make a sorbet syrup. To do that, I'm going to combine the dry ingredients first. And the reason we do that is so that the particles are dispersed evenly. Um, a lot of these ingredients are thickeners and when you uh, don't mix them enough, they tend to clump. And so to um, prevent that, we're gonna combine all the dry ingredients first, then combine them with the wet ingredients, and then we will boil them uh, together for a few minutes before cooling the syrup. This syrup will last um, quite a long time, especially if you put it in two plastic containers and freeze it. And then you could take it out, thaw it, uh, give it a mix, and then use it to make sorbet whenever you want. I am making quite a large batch. This will make several batches of syrup, but I like to make this ahead of time so that I can make different kinds of fruit sorbets as the summer goes on. Um, it is kind of getting hot right now, so I am looking forward to making a lot of different sorbets with this. Some of my favorites are strawberry, uh, lemon, raspberry, mango, coconut, and one of my personal favorites is watermelon sorbet with mint. So the beginning of all that is the sorbet syrup. So we're going to go ahead and do the dry ingredients first. I have my scale here. I do work with the scale most often. I don't really use a lot of um, cup measurements if I can help it. Uh, a lot of things are way better done in gram measurements. I've got a large metal bowl that I'm going to put all my dry ingredients in. When it comes to measuring bowls, I like to get a large bowl versus a small bowl. I'm going to start with a thousand grams of sugar. Again, it sounds like a lot, but this is a large batch. So it's, this is just granulated cane sugar. So that's a thousand grams. To this, I'm gonna add 35 grams of tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is a thickener and I like to use it instead of cornstarch or potato starch because the aftertaste is very smooth with tapioca starch and it doesn't have like a gritty or any kind of floury taste. I like to use it when I'm making ice cream. Also. So 35 grams of tapioca starch. It's also sometimes called tapioca flour. It's pretty easy to find. Um, I get mine from the Asian markets, but you can also find it online. So we've got the tapioca flour, tapioca starch in here with the sugar. And I'm going to add a little bit of xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is an ingredient found in a lot of uh, grocery store type products, especially in uh, something like salad dressing or sauces. It's a thickener. And just a little bit is going to help thicken our syrup. So with sorbets, a lot of the ingredients that go in here are thickeners. The purpose of this syrup is to be able to prevent crystallization in your sorbet. I mean, anybody can just um, add fruit and sugar and water and run it through a machine. Um, it will be fine for a day maybe. But the purpose here is to be able to keep that sorbet good for a week, two weeks. Um, and to do that, we need to be able to prevent ice crystal formation within the sorbet. So you get a smooth texture throughout uh, a week, two weeks, so you're able to enjoy it more and it's a soft texture as well. So that's why we're adding a lot of the ingredients we're adding today. I am going to add a sixth of a teaspoon of salt. You don't, you don't really need to measure this. Maybe a pinch or so is fine. And I like to add salt when I make um, anything sweet because salt helps to balance out the sweetness. So the last thing I'm gonna add here is something called locust bean gum. And locust bean is a fava bean type looking bean that comes from a tree. I remember when I used to uh, wait at the bus stop when I was little that I would always find all these little beans on the sidewalk and we'd crack them open and we thought it was hilarious but um, turns out that was locust 
bean. And from that comes this locust bean gum. And it's also used as a thickener. Uh, you don't hear about it too often, but this is optional, but it is a very good uh, thickener. So I'm going to use 0.5 grams of this. You don't need a lot. If you overdo it, you can make your uh, product kind of gummy and goopy and no one wants that. So I am using a smaller scale for this. This one will measure in 0 0.01 grams, whereas this scale measures only in one gram increments. So to measure 0.5 grams, I actually need to use this tiny scale. Again, optional, nice to have it, um, but your sorbet will turn out fine if you don't use it. Another good thing to add to sorbet syrup, if you want, that's optional, is something called sorbet stabilizer, and that's not fairly um, available, but you can find it, and it's a mix of things like these emulsifiers and uh, thickeners that will keep pretty much your fruit sugar mixture from forming ice crystals. Um, I do have some, but I'm not going to add it here just for sake of demonstration. But if you wanted to add a little bit and you happen to have some, that would be really great. So just be careful with um, measuring out your, your thickeners here, xanthan gums, uh, tapioca starch, locust bean gum. You want to make sure you have the right amount. This is my little scale if you want to see it. Okay, so here's my mixture. It's just a bunch of powder that we measured out. I'm just going to mix it here. This is really important so that everything is well dispersed before I put any liquid in here. Once I put water in here, it's going to clump up. So I'm going to combine these. This is really important step, so I'm going to take my time and make sure that everything is well There's some powder popping up. So you see it's nicely well um, dispersed here. I'm going to add some liquid now to this, including some corn syrup. For this um, sorbet syrup, you can use water. You can also use dairy products like milk or half and half if you want to make something that I would consider more like sherbet, where, for example, you have like a creamy, uh, strawberry, sherbet, um, something like that, where you want it a little bit richer, um, and that is delicious also. For my purposes, I'm going to use uh, water as my liquid, but I have done dairy in the past and it is delicious. So we're going to use 900 grams of liquid here. I'm going to use purified water. 900 grams is about four cups. And I have about a quart of water here. I'm going to also add 230 grams of corn syrup to this. So I happen to buy my corn syrup in buckets, but you know, carol syrup, all that is fine. Just make sure it is a light corn syrup, not a dark corn syrup. So I'm gonna do a slow pour here, which is easiest for me, but um, just make sure that you try to get as close to 230 grams as possible. So corn syrup is actually different from high fructose corn syrup that you hear about. So these are different products. So we've got all our liquids in here. I'm going to give it a mix before I put it in my pan. And then we're going to bring it to a boil and boil it for two minutes. I like to use a larger saucepan or a larger stock pot for this. If uh, something happens to boil over, it's no big deal versus if you have a small pot, um, it's trouble. I actually remember one time I was trying to save space and I used this small saucepan to put um, frying oil in because I wanted to make tortilla chips. 
And I used a small saucepan, just like not thinking. And of course, once I put the tortillas in, it overflowed and pretty much almost set my house on fire. So use a large pot. I mean, there's no harm. So I'm gonna use a hot plate here. I'd like to use a combination of a spatula and a whisk because you might encounter some lumps that form, especially with tapioca starch. It starts cooking at the bottom and you want to be able to counteract that and make sure that everything cooks evenly. So I'd like to start with the whisk, but also I like to use a spatula to get the corners, um, especially if you're using a gas stove, it tends to kind of start to cook at the edges of your stock pot or pan, and then you start having gummy lumps. I kind of am armed with both. Also, you want to use the spatula here. You can scrape the sides because sugar granules gathering at the sides and you don't really want that. I have my heat on high and it's not, this is not something you walk away from, especially if you have it on high. I don't really want to set it on low. Um, it's not going to benefit from that. Um, some starches start to break down after you heat it for a long time. So I just want to be able to thicken it as quickly as I can and bring it to temperature. And again, once this comes to a boil, once I see little bubbles, I'm going to boil it for two minutes and then get it off the heat. has just come to a boil. I put my timer on for two minutes. You'll see bubbles um, that form and when that happens, turn on your timer for two minutes. So I've been going on high uh, heat this whole time and I've turned it down to medium so I don't start burning stuff and that will just um, keep my mixture out of boil without having any burns. You'll notice I have a bucket of ice water and when this is done, I'm going to put my mixture into a Ziploc bag and then give it an ice bath. And that will cool it down very quickly because of the surface area of the mixture touching the very cold water. I like to have a bunch of ice on hand for these types of purposes. It works really well for ice cream mixtures also, um, any custards, pudding, Anything that you really want, cool down very quickly. You can see the heat coming off of this. It's almost ready. Okay, so the timer just went off. I'm gonna turn the stove off and take the pot off the stove. I'm going to let this cool down just a little bit before I put it into uh, a Ziploc bag, just because it's a little bit too hot and I don't want to uh, melt the plastic. The other thing you can do is to kind of kick start the process. If your bucket is big enough, you can kind of do this. As we stir, it's a little tricky. So you can store this mixture in quart sized deli containers, or you can just keep it in the Ziploc bag. If you store it in a Ziploc bag, make sure you try to get out as much air as you can. If you put it in a container, just try to uh, cover the top with some plastic or something like that. It's not so much a worry with this particular syrup, but if you were uh, making something like an ice cream mixture, that would definitely be the case. Also, if you had added dairy to this, there's more of a chance that a skin will form. You can see the steam is kind of cooled down. I'm going to get my Ziploc bags. And these are just freezer bags from Target. I like to use some kind of measuring cup for this. This is a two-quart cup. I'm just going to pour very carefully. About half the mixture goes in. When you push the mixture into the water bath, 
it will push a lot of the air out for you. And then you just zip it up and let that sit. Uh, once every five minutes or so, I'm gonna take it out and just kind of smoosh it around and make sure that the temperature is even. So I'm gonna do my second one here. This time I'm going to use a spatula to help me get the mixture out from the uh, sides of the pot. But if there's any uh, stuck to the side that has gelled or um, burned, hopefully not, but if you have anything that doesn't look right of the sides, uh, don't scrape that in. So it's going to look a little bit transparent, kind of like a jelly goop but it definitely shouldn't be as white as before. That's kind of the color we end up with. If you have used dairy, this obviously will not be this color. It will be a little bit more opaque. take this out, mash it around, and you can tell in the middle it's warmer than where it directly touches the ice. And so this way you can go from boiling to a pretty reasonable temperature fairly quickly. Now if you are making this really ahead of time, maybe a day ahead of time, you can go ahead and put this in the fridge just like this and it will pull it down the rest of the way for you. I'm going to be using uh, this to make my strawberry sorbet today, so I want it cooled fairly quickly. If you are using an ice cream maker that uses a canister, your mixture will need to be 40 degrees or less. Uh, my ice cream maker happens to have a compressor, so it can actually take a warmer temperature. It will cool it down before it starts to freeze it. but that just means more time uh, in the ice cream maker. I also am going to be using frozen strawberries and that will bring this temperature down a lot as well. If you were using fresh strawberries, then you would need this at 40 degrees. Again, only if you were using a canister type ice cream maker and you were going to be making this today. If you were making this for tomorrow, you would be fine because you could just put everything in the fridge. So you can see this is starting to thicken more also, it's starting to become less liquidy and more, um, more thick. I'm pretty happy with the temperature of this bag. This one has a little more so it, it will take a little bit more time to go down as well. I'm going to let this sit here for a little bit while I go get my strawberries and my lemon juice and some water and we're going to prepare the strawberry sorbet mix. I'm ready to make my strawberry sorbet mix. I've got 440 grams of strawberries here. You can use strawberry puree. That's a little bit hard to find than just frozen strawberries. So I go with frozen strawberries, it really doesn't matter. Um, these strawberries, I just happen to have frozen on my own. Um, I bought them on sale when it's kind of the height of strawberry season. And I like to buy them in bulk and uh, clean them and freeze them and then I can make sorbet with this. So these have come out of the freezer and I've defrosted them for about a minute so that they're a little bit easier to blend. I'm going to add 50 grams of cold water here. This is actually another step if you wanted to add more dairy and make it more of a strawberry cream type sherbet, you can add 50 grams of milk here as well. I'm going to also add about a teaspoon of lemon juice and you can also use citric acid. Uh, I happen to have lemon juice, and this is just a commercial lemon juice that I'm going to add here. And that is just to prevent the sorbet from being a little bit too sweet. I kind of, I was a little bit generous there because I like mine a little bit more sour than most. So now I'm going to add 415 grams of this. 
for 15 grams of this. And I'm just going to see if I can kind of pour it in a little opening here. So 415. And you can see it's kind of goopy as it comes out. And that's what's going to prevent the ice crystals from forming and your sorbet will be super smooth. Some people like to use egg whites for sorbet to uh, do the same thing. I think that's kind of gross, um, but I've heard people doing it like uh, whipped egg whites, but this makes a very, very nice sorbet that's very stable. That's about 415. So I'm just going to push out the air here as much as I can, zip it up the rest of the way. And this again goes in the fridge or the freezer if you like, and you can just thaw it and use it again. I probably wouldn't keep it in the freezer for more than a month. So now I have everything I need to make my sorbet mix in here. I'm going to use a stick blender to blend everything together. You can use a regular blender, I just happen to have a stick blender handy. Um, but either way, you just want to make sure that this is well blended and ready to go. This stick blender, also called an immersion blender, is from Bonix of Switzerland. I think it works pretty well. It hasn't really given out on me yet. I use it pretty regularly. So here we go. There's a high speed and a low speed. I don't know why they have a low speed because a high speed isn't like anything crazy. Um, I generally don't use the low speed at all. A really great thing about a stick blender is that it's much easier to clean than a regular blender. With an immersion blender, it's really important to make sure that the, um, the head here is immersed in whatever you're blending. Otherwise, it kind of uh, chucks everything up at you. Um, also, it adds a lot of air if you don't uh, immerse it all the way. So you can strain this to get rid of the seeds. I kind of like the texture of the seeds, so I'm going to leave them in. But if you don't enjoy that, um, you can strain it in a sieve and get the seeds out before you run it in the ice cream mixer. So I'm going to run this in the ice cream mixer right now, and I'll show you how that goes. mixture for about 12 minutes. You want to be able to take it out of the ice cream maker before it's completely solid because uh, you don't want it to run too much and that can affect the texture. I usually scoop it into deli containers like this, get it in the fridge as fast, get it in the freezer as fast as possible and let it chill at least two hours. You can also eat it right away. It'll just be a little bit of a soft serve. So I hope you guys try this. It's going to make your summer days so much cooler.